How does a shoe go from being brand new like this one to being used and abused with a crushed midsole, barely any tread, and holes in it? I've been using this pair of Hoka Speedgoat 5s for the last year, and I put over 500 miles on them. That may not seem like a lot to some people, but let me tell you about how we got here and why I'm surprised they lasted this long. I used the Hoka Speedgoat 4s on my through hike of the Great Divide Trail and attribute my lack of foot pain and ability to do long miles to the shoes in a big way. The cushion and perfect amount of support were exactly what I needed, but the soles on all three pairs I used delaminated after only a few hundred miles. And while I love the shoe, I was disappointed with the durability. So when Hoka sent me the Speedgoat 5s, I expected some sort of durability issue to rear its head. Every shoe is gonna fail at some point, but the Speedgoat 4s failed a lot sooner than I would have liked. But my feet felt amazing when they're in the Speedgoat 4s, so I wanted to give the Speedgoat 5s a try and see if they address the durability issues. I plopped them on my feet and started taking them up, down, and around the Canadian Rockies and was really liking them. After the first few hundred kilometers, they're treating my feet really well just like the Speedgoat 4s. And that's the point when I decided I wanted to take them on three of my bigger trips of the year to see how they did. The first trip was the West Coast Trail where I spent 90 kilometers hiking along the ocean, exposing the speed goats to constant wetness. They're wet the entire trip and then tons of salt water, which if you know, that is not great for shoes. The shoes came out of that trip without any durability issues and it really highlighted how well the sole does at sticking to really wet surfaces like us climbing up and down wet ladders, as well as scrambling over wet rocks along the ocean. I then took the shoe on the Tour de Mont Blanc, which was 100 miles over the course of eight days, and the shoe's only real exposure to that length of trip with that many miles. And the Speedgoat 5s did keep my feet in great shape day after day, even when we're doing big miles and hiking over some pretty rocky, uneven terrain. At the end of the day, my foot was still feeling great and I never had any issues. The third trip was the Skyline Trail in the Canadian Rockies, as well as a bunch of other trips in and around the Canadian Rockies where I really beat the shoes up. The Canadian Rockies are not easy on shoes, especially when you're taking them above Alpine into discreet slopes and scrambling with them. But once winter hit, I ran south in order to hike with the Speedgoat 5s because I didn't want to be taking them out in winter conditions in minus 20 degrees Celsius. I put a bunch of miles on the shoes in the desert where they're exposed to gritty sand as well as sandpaper-like rock, and that was where the shoes hit their last leg. The midsole of the shoe was pretty crushed at this point. I could get about 20 to 30 kilometers out of the shoe before I started feeling my feet getting a little bit uncomfortable. The outer sole was starting to get worn as well. I wasn't getting nearly as good of traction on loose soil and muddy terrain. You can see here the little nubbins that are on the end that are giving the shoe great traction earlier in its life were just starting to get too worn down. Like I said with the Speedgoat 4s, one of the big failure points that I encountered was the heel delaminating. With the Speedgoat 5s, Hoka seemed to address that issue. I did not encounter that problem at all, and that's likely due to these reinforced bits that connected this little heel nubbin that was delaminating to the rest of the outer sole. But where the shoe did fail, and this was probably the ultimate failure point of the shoe, was in the upper material. Hocus changed the upper material for the Speedgoat 5s from a little, what seemed like a little bit more of a durable material with the Speedgoat 4s, with some overlays that seemed to add to durability. With the Speedgoat 5s, it's a little bit stretchier and feels a little bit less durable. And where my shoe ultimately failed were at the pinky toes on both shoes, where I got holes right on the sides as my pinky toe kind of pushed out and where the shoe was connecting to the midsole. This could have been due to the upper just being a little bit less durable, but it also could have been due to the fact that my foot was maybe slightly wide for these shoes, as well as using them kind of like a rock climbing shoe for some trips where I was going over and under rocks and really putting a lot of pressure on that part of the shoe. With that midsole compression and the soles getting pretty worn down, they're on their last legs anyways, and I probably only would have gotten another 70, 80 miles out of them if that pinky toe spot hadn't worn through. Overall, I was surprised with how durable the Speedgoat 5s were, especially with how much I abused them and the type of terrain and trips I was taking them on. And for that reason, the Speedgoat 5s are gonna continue to be my go-to shoe. I got another pair here that I'm gonna be using for all of my hikes in 2023. My feet just feel so comfortable when I use them. At the end of the day, I'm not in any pain, which is not the case with every trail runner that I've used. And that Vibra Mega Grip sole is phenomenal. If you wanna see a full review of the Speedgoat 5 after I put about 200 miles on them, then go check out this video right up here. I stand behind everything that I said in that video, including my comments on this little heel tab that Hoka added to the Speedgoat 5s.